Alrighty then, Warframe is going to be going for a lot of quality of life changes, but is this a nerf or is this a buff? Let's go and jump into the Warframe shield changes that could be potentially proposing a new better still with the same idea but we'll go and break that down and explain how that works so first things first this is going to be for new players to understand this is going to be for returning players this is going to be for um you know uh, people who are just casual in warframe and this is also going to be for people who like pushing to the absolute limits it's going to cover all of you guys so i'm going to break this down on different levels all right hopefully we can all understand so first things first and we're just going to get this part out of the way because although it's important it's not as important in my eyes Hear me out because the next part is a little bit more important but that's towards end game people anyways i'm rambling first things first they're going to buff tenno shields overall this basically just means that we have a 25 percent damage resistance to all incoming damage whenever whenever anything hits those shields we're now going to have a 50 percent all right so it's basically getting 100 percent value it is doubling we're stronger in that respect now to accommodate with that there's going to be a couple mods um i'm going to leave the values up on the screen right here so your fast reflection your vigilante vigor and your fortitude as well that will also go ahead and accommodate with these changes of the tenno shields so from there, they are going to be reworking shield gating. Now, the idea is that the core mechanic of shield gating was to go ahead and protect people to stop them from being one shot at high level content. However, the way that it currently works in Warframe is the lower shields that we have, the quicker and easier it is to regenerate to max shields so that we can go and get the max return on the invulnerability gating. Now, there's two numbers I want you to understand. There is 0.3 and there's going to be 1.3. These are the two numbers that currently exist in the game. TLDR, basically, full max out shields. You're good to go. Everything's been recharged. Okay, the enemy breaks your shield right there and then. You've now got a 1.3. Okay, from there onwards, um, if you have a partial shield, regenerate, and it's not fully maxed out, if the enemy breaks your shield, then 0 0.3. What is shield break? It means that the enemy takes, hits you with the damage, and whatever shield that you have at that existing time is broken, it goes all the way to zero, you get the idea. Factory reset. Right. Now that we got that terminology out of the way, that's how it exists at the current state. That's how it exists in the current game. So it made sense to have the littlest shield possible so that you could always get a 1.3 second window. However, what they're going to do now is have a scale. So let's go and break this down. Now, depending on your modded values, this window could be anywhere between 0.3 minimum, so it's exactly the same, but to a 2.5. So instead of the 1.3, it's now 2.5. But that is at a different shield threshold, which is 1,150 shields. So to receive the original 1.3 seconds that we used to always go for, you're going to need at least 325 shields upon shield break. Now, don't lose your mind just yet because there is a lot more to this, okay? But for now, to give you an idea of how that's looking, if we go and use this chart so you can guys can go, can go ahead and see this, we've got... 0.3 down here. This is how it used to exist all across this line. This is how it's going to be existing. There's got the 1.3 up there. That, that is whenever you have your shields completely maxed out or whenever you have full res uh, full restored shields, right? The way that it's now going to go ahead and work is you've now got this like little line going up there. So you're going to need at least 325 shields, whether that be modded or innately on your Warframes. It is what it is. You need at least 325 to get 1.3 seconds. So if your Warframe innately comes with 300 shields, uh, it looks like you're not going to be getting the 1.3 seconds, but you're still going to be getting like a 1 point something second, if you will. All right. The maths are there. I'm not the math guy, but you can see it in the chart. You can understand it, right? From there onwards, what is going to happen is if you have over 325 shields, so if you put on things like, if you ever heard, uh, if you're a newer player, you might hear that, hey, don't mod for redirection. It is a shield mod. And the reason why we don't mod for that is to do with shield gain. Now, newer players could go ahead and do that because they don't have a lot of survivability anyways. But as you start approaching, and it's mostly this end, end, end game where you're doing endurance runs, and only really endurance runs, um, shield gain is such a great form of survival. It's one of the best, but not the best. Just when you pair it with everything else, like crowd control, brief respite, organ mods, all of this other stuff, shield gain becomes so good for survival, right? What's going to happen now is, so uh let's say 
I don't, I'm trying to think like Warframe's like, I don't I think it's Zaku or someone else like that. They've got like a bit of higher innate shields or if you slap redirection on, you're going to have higher innate, uh, higher shields, modded shields. You're now going to get a bigger window of invulnerability. So this is going to be interesting because this now means there's still two ways that we can look at this. We can either have very low shields or we can have very high shields. And you might be thinking, no, that's not how it's done. Why would you want low shields? Because there's a mod underneath that we're going to go ahead and cover in just a second. So then from there onwards, we've got the next part. So partially depleted shields do not have their own separate shield gate duration. So again, as I echoed earlier, previously shields that were not fully regenerated offered 0.33. So if you had 150 shields out of 300, if they break it, 0.33, right? Now, what's going to happen is partially depleted shields will be treated the same scaling values as above. So if you had 1,200 shields, but your shields were broken with 350 available, you would receive 1.3. I am going to go and say something for the sheer sake of this video. It does say 350 and then it says 1.3. It does go and say up here that you only need 325 for 1.3. I don't know if that's translated wrong because, and I would assume that 350 would actually get higher than 1.3 because we could look at the chart and see like, 350 is well that's not going to be 1.3 so uh, it might be a bit of a translation breakdown there so they might have just accidentally goofed on that but that's okay either way you can understand that 325 is your 1.3 threshold unless so from here onwards, we're introducing a new corrupted mod. We haven't had a new corrupted mod in quite a while. We've got something called Catalyzing Shields. Now I'm gonna go and explain this as brief as I possibly can. And we're gonna look at the mods and just focus on the mod right now. As we can see, it's got a times 0.2 and then it's got a 1.33 full shield gate immunity. So let's go ahead and put that into perspective. If you had hypothetically 300 shield capacity and that's all you had on your Warframe and let's say it was innate on your Warframe so it came with your Warframe, you are now going to go ahead and decrease that by 80% so it's kind of like a Decay and Dragon Key, but not because Decay and Dragon Key is 75%, but we'll get to that in a moment. You're now going to have 20% of that 300, okay? Which I believe is around like 60 or something like that, right? Now though, with 60, you're going to have 1.33 seconds of full shield gate. Now, if you compare the likes of this mod to the likes of this chart, if you had 60, you wouldn't have... 1.33 seconds does that make sense so do also keep in mind that and there's two ways to go ahead and read this we can understand it exactly how i said it here or we can also understand it that if you was to go a little bit lower with catalyzing shields equipped if you was to go a little bit lower each and every time you're going to get less and less and less forms of shield gain, right? This is why I'm saying the lowest number possible for us to obtain would be better because Brief Respire Augur mods, they still do the same thing. Now, Brief Respire Augur mods, what do they actually do? Uh, I'll put an image on the screen somewhere here. They basically mean whenever you go and use Warframe energy, you convert whatever energy you spend on the ability into shields so the lower the number the maximum number that we have in this case we're minus an 80 percent from the catalyzing then the idea is that we should be going to reach that 60 thresholds that's just an example if 60 was where we were going with 300 right so it's still basically the same but we'll go down just a little bit because this this is where it's different so what actually happened to the key and dragon keys well they're being updated to both debuff shields and shield gating tldr Decay and Dragon Keys will now cap player shield gates to 0.3. Now, this is this is not what we want to do. Uh, I wasn't, I would normally, whenever it came to like shield gating, sometimes I would forget about putting on the Decay and Dragon Key and I was like, oh God, now I've got to leave and re-go and this and that. It's easier for me to go ahead and check my modification. So I don't really mind the mod coming in here and I'll explain that a little bit more in a second as well. But um, with, the, with the change here, this basically means that you're not going to be running Decay and Dragon Keys anymore. You don't need to be doing that because you're basically just capping yourself at a 0.3 shield gating and that's not good. Even if you don't do shield gate in, in endurance running and you just play normally, it's still not good. You don't want that, all right? <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to put yourself in that limit. So the only places this is really going to hurt is whenever you go and do the corrupted vaults to go ahead and get augment uh, to go and get corrupted mods and so forth. Now, do keep in mind for the first week that this comes out, I think it says here they're going to run an alert to go ahead and get this for free. 
so that you can go ahead and get this nice and quick from there onwards after the first week you're going to have to farm for the catalyzing shields now if you do want me to go and do a guide on or a, a breakdown on what i would do to go ahead and get corrupted mods just let me know i'll go ahead and do that but anyways that's basically what's going to be happening here so now that we take all of this into account what is actually happening so if you're a new player hopefully you can understand this if you're a returning player and you used to play with old shields yeah they've changed all right and then if you're a veteran player going into this what does this actually all mean as we condense all of this down right now so the way that this is now going to work is in the old days or in today up until october <clears throat> you would pay attention to 0.3 1.3 partial shields fully restored shields okay that's how you used to do it forget that for a second it's now going to be 0.3 1.3 there's going to be a mod to cap 1.3 as well and then there's going to be 2.5 if you want to go one bit further there's actually a 3.5 because uh children i was about to go and call her children yeah sure uh hildren also gets buffed here as well to a 3.5 second of shield gating so the way that this is now going to work is whenever an enemy if without any mods without anything and you've got innate shields on you let's say and i'm going to make up a number here let's say i have 700 shields yeah and the enemy whittles me down a little bit chips at me but doesn't quite take the shields off so they whittle it down from 700 so let's just go and say uh let's go and say 410 right so i'm saying at 410 but then the next hit that hits me completely removes all of that shield from there onwards i would look at the chart and i'd be like right well where's 410 so yeah i know this is going to be like it's not really over oversimplified anything muscle memory here as i've seen some people say is going to be harder for you to adapt to but if you've got over 1.3 seconds believe me you've got enough time to react if you needed a rolling guard or anything else to go ahead and pair on top of it if you need to reposition whatever anything over 1.3 is plenty of time okay so casual players new players you're in a good spot this is nice this also encourages you to go and use mods like redirection um whilst also not catering towards like the meta end game endurance running now if you are an endurance runner and you're not catering towards the casual and everything else like that the difference between it is instead of running decay and dragon key you're gonna hurt your build and sacrifice your build let's go ahead and put in catalyzing shields i'll cover a few things here number one because this is some stuff that we saw and we had conversations about number one the drain isn't that bad it's 13 there are some mods that cost 16 so i'm glad it's not higher than that number two should it be an exile slot uh, yes and no but unfortunately exile slots have been so contested with prime sure footed it might be a contest over prime sure footed but you get the idea um number three in this one here is and i i stress this enough the only time that you're really gonna look to use this mod is if you are deciding to go do you know what i'm enjoying still path right now but i think i could do like another hour here yeah yeah i'm gonna do another two hours right if that's you that's where this mod starts to come into play that's where rolling guards and augers and brief respite all of that stuff starts coming into play because shield gating is still very preferable to players in today and soon as well it, there's no change there because you still get the 1.33 free now there is a little bit of whittling down here <clears throat> that we did have a discussion about and i'm not 100 sure because writing can be a little bit wonky at times but um the question is is let's say that i had let's say i was going against level 5000 and for some unknown reason for some unknown reason uh, they only did let's say that i had 100 shields and they they hit me or something chipped me a little bit of debris or like a proc or something or whatever hit me and i went down to like 25 shields from there onwards the question is does that then actually so it's not a partial shield break because it's not a full recharge so they're changing it ever so slightly does that then actually give you this because the way that that's written says that it gives you that but we also feel like that that's not entirely true because that's not so uh, the way that they uh, the way that they wrote up here we, ha we had a little read on this one because they are a little bit different and i'm gonna just go over this shield breaks on shields that were not fully regenerated right but then this one says um if you have a max shield but your shields were broken with only available see there's a difference between having 1200 shields then having 350 and then breaking it but it already stored to 1200 and then there's a difference between hey it has been broken and now it's trying to regen do you see what i'm saying the way that it's written is different so we're not 100 sure on that one if you are 100 sure I'd, I'd be surprised if you are but if you are 100 sure let me know um, but we can go ahead and test that a bit more on release but overall how is it looking are we buffed are we nerfed are we anything no we've mostly just changed all right so uh, is, is it gonna go ahead and hurt our builds or anything else like that 
No, it's not going to go ahead and hurt our bills as much. We are power crept out of our little minds right now. Um, let's go ahead and put this in perspective. We've got things like Archon Shards. We've got things like Arcanes, like the Arcane uh, that gives us extra strength. Uh, there's actually quite a few of them now. Um, and then the Arcane, like Arcane Efficiency and stuff like that. Arcane Molt and so forth. These Arcanes will go ahead and make up for any kind of diminishing returns that you go and take out of your kit and you can go and just pop it in and flex it around, right? Because at the end of the day, we're getting, we're literally getting Archon Shards for free. Keep that in mind, all right? So yeah, it, 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 can, it might see it as a way of hurting your build, but you're not really hurting your build, all right? So that is the extensive kind of breakdown towards it. Now, there are going to be some other changes and there are things like, hey, healths and shields and whatnot. They're going to have lower numbers in here. You'll think, oh, we just got nerfed. We didn't. It's just some accommodation stuff. Lots of quality of life coming through. But what do you guys think? How are you guys finding this change? Uh, let me know inside the comments, but if this does help you, leave a like. Hopefully you can go and share this off with someone else as well if they need help with it. If you're a new player, returning player, veteran, casual, whatever it may be, I'm trying to break this down so that everybody understands it. As of right now, we're just gonna go for a little bit of a change, but the only people that are really and truly gonna get affected by it are gonna be the people who cater towards this mod and cater towards endurance running. That is it. And even then, it's just a change. That's basically about it, all right? Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys again in the next video.